Welcome back everybody to another classic WoW hype video. In today's episode, we've got to travel to Stormwind, one of the most lighthearted and beloved cities in all of World of Warcraft. There's never a dull moment in this city full of sunshine, from the echoing choir singing in the background, For he shall live, to Topper McNabb standing behind the auction house begging for some coin. You need something? How are you? Forget something? Knock it off. Stormwind feels cozy and old school, kind of like some European city with brick roads and detailed architecture on every building. Merchants can be found in each subsection selling anything from tailoring and leatherworking supplies to engineering and blacksmithing tools. And the schoolmistress Miss Dana, she can be seen walking her students around Stormwind, educating them on how to make gold in World of Warcraft. But not everything in Stormwind is as good as it seems. If you can see past the singing voices and overlook the beautiful landscape, you'll stumble across some of the deep dark secrets that fill the streets of SW. Now, don't even get me started on the shady stuff going over in SI7, but if you were to roam around a little bit more, you'd find out not everything is as it seems. For starters, what's going on in the Stormwind stockades? I know the humans have taken it upon themselves to jail some of the baddest blokes around like members of the Defias, the Dark Iron Dwarves, and the rare two-headed ogre every once in a while, but have you been in there lately? It's absolute chaos, and apparently Warden Thelwater's sending in local travelers to do his dirty work in exchange for a little bit of dinero. 60 silver! <laughs> yeah, right. Have you seen those stockades guards? And what's up with this creepy music? Nah fam, and that's just the beginning. Can anyone explain the other stockade below the canal? Like. We've had no explanation of what's going on under here for 15 years, and if it looks anything like the other stockades, I don't want to be a part of it. And then, there's this thing. This is where Justin's dad says all the bad boys go. All the boys that use wireless mouses and click their abilities. As for the kids who aren't in school, there are some boys who like to roam around the canals and fish and tell tall tales, or maybe not so tall. I mean, here it is boys, little old Justin's dad knew what he was talking about. Pandaren in 2004. Orcs eyes glow red because they drink blood. Obviously his dad is Medivh, or possibly his mother's Jaina Proudmoore, but regardless, sure enough, he nails it with this last one. Justin, you're right, there are no fish in this canal. If only you knew. That's right boys, not a myth, not a myth, he exists, he exists, just like I got five racks on my wrist, please don't get it twisted, sewer beast will have you fisted, water glaring, back in my face I be staring, when all of a sudden I find myself running, he exists, he exists, it's not a legend or a myth, or a myth, eight men long, the mini King Kong, so rare I had to write him a song. A grace for days. Howdy. That's right, boys. We're talking about the sewer beast. He exists. He exists. <laughs> now, today I want to talk about my experience with the beast and my first encounter with him. So, the first time I heard about the Sewer Beast was, of course, through Trade Chat. You know, it was just another day in Stormwind, and Trade Chat, of course, was popping like usual, and inevitably, someone was bragging about the fact that they'd killed the Sewer Beast, or they were a hunter and they were taming him or something. So, I'd heard of this guy, but I'd never seen him for myself, and I always remember walking around the canals in hopes that I'd just get a glimpse of this guy so I could just get a look at him. Well, I'm pretty sure it was a long time before I came across him and one day I'm walking around the city and someone yells, hey, 
the sewer beast is in between Old Town and the Trade District. Now, of course, I don't have my mount at this time, and I was probably farting around in the freaking park or something, because I remember by the time I got there, the beast was already dead, and I missed my chance at grouping up with somebody and getting a chance at this guy's super epic loot. <laughs> you know, the crowd had disbanded, and I went on my way, so I'd seen the sewer beast dead, but I didn't, like, really see him. I wanted to see this guy alive, you know, I didn't know if he moved from point A to point B, or what he looked like in action, or what, like, but dead wasn't good enough for me. Now, I remember this next part much more clearly, because this was the first time I actually came across the sewer beast alive, and it was really neat, because no one announced it in trade chat, I just ended up stumbling upon him. So, I'm doing my normal run around Stormwind City, looking for places to wall jump, you know, as usual, and I'm running from the Trade District to the Mage Quarter, and lo and behold, I turn the corner, and I see like 5-10 to 10 people in the corner of the canal on either side, and it was super weird because you don't ever see people crowded up in that area, and then all of a sudden I look in the canal, and I see the Sewer Beast. There's a rare spawn crocolisk in the canal. You know, it... The whole scenario just looked so out of place, and that's why it was so memorable. You know, I think everyone was waiting to take their shot. Nobody had encountered this guy before. Nobody knew how hard he was. Like, was he a world boss? A mini boss? He's a rare spawn in the Stormwind City Canal. So everybody was a little timid, and no one wanted to jump the gun. And then, all of a sudden, someone just goes for it. So, of course, I jump in right afterwards along with everybody else, probably expecting a share of the loot since this guy's super epic and rare, and probably drops like a legendary. So we're sitting under the water, and all of a sudden this guy goes down, man. Back down, belly up. And everybody starts typing in chat, what'd he drop, what'd he drop? <laughs> and of course, they end up winking a gray tooth. A great tooth. My world was shattered, or I was just really disappointed. I wish they would have just linked their stupid blue item or epic legend or epic item that they had equipped. It would have made me feel a lot better. But it was fine. The mystery was solved and memories were made that day. I can't complain. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's talk numbers. What does the sewer beast do? What is his purpose? So let's take a look at the wiki notes on the sewer beast and then I'll give my own summary afterwards. Sewer Beast is a level 50 rare mob albino crocolisk found in Stormwind City's canal system. This named mob doesn't have a rare mob loot table, nor is it used in any quest objectives. It has a lengthy spawn timer and can be found at the ends of the canals, such as right outside Stormwind Keep. It does not wander around after appearing, instead remaining stationary at whichever spawn point he happens to be at. Until Wrath of the Lich King, Sewer Beast was also unique in being the only tameable mob in the entire game to regularly spawn inside a capital city. It now shares that distinction with the Underbelly Croc, found in Dalaran, of course. So, the creature is very large and yellow-brown with a light tint of white coloration on its body. It appears to be a very large, deviate crocolisk that are more commonly seen in the Wailing Caverns. Three young boys that fish the canals will sometimes talk about the sewer beast, but this is in no way an indication of its spawning. Also, it has been rumored that the creature is likely to spawn between 8am to 10am server time. It is hostile to both Alliance and Horde players, and in the World of Warcraft beta test, the sewer beast was the largest tameable creature in the world, approximately the length of 8 human characters lying down on the ground if lined up head to toe. After pet size normalization, Sewer Beast no longer has that distinction, but is still one of the least seen hunter pets on most servers. Now, a couple of things, I swear I remember this guy swimming from point A to point B. Apparently not, but how much cooler would that have been? Also, pet normalization. Now, we're talking about size. Let's not get started on hunter pet attack speeds, but when it comes to the sizing of hunter pets, they all shrink when they're tamed and grow to be their full size at level 60 whatever that is, but in this case, not 8 men long like the wiki note suggests. And get this, the same exact model of Crocolis can be found in the Wailing Caverns, making this guy a lot less special. But it's not clear anywhere how small the sewer beast gets when you tame him, and from my memory, again, I swear people always talked about how the sewer beast was the biggest hunter pet you could tame in the game. And obviously that 8 min long size never made it out of the beta, so it must be true? But I guess to solve that is to ask when pet size normalization was introduced. Was it at the same time as hunter pet attack speeds? 
then it may not be bigger than the crocolis found in Wailing Caverns. But if it was at the launch of the game, then it should hold true that the Sewer Beast is the largest hunter pet obtainable in vanilla. Anyways, that would be the one unique thing about this guy. Also, I love reading these inspiration notes as well, which strongly suggests that they were written by Blizzard. The Sewer Beast is probably a reference to the common urban legend of crocodiles living in city sewers. So like a World of Warcraft version of the Ninja Turtles. Also, I almost forgot to point this out. In the Cataclysm expansion, everyone thought the Sewer Beast was taken out of the game. He didn't appear in the canals anymore, or at least he only did for a short period of time. You see, every expansion, the NPCs in the cities and towns get a little bit bigger. From level 60 to 70, 70 to 80, and then all of a sudden, 85 was just a little too much for the aggro range of the guards and the sewer beast. Because of this, the guards would kill the sewer beast before anyone could get to him. Now, this is probably just from patrolling guards or one or two ends of the canals who have guards set up near the beast, so this solves the mystery of my memory of the beast swimming through the canal. But can you imagine this guy swimming through Stormwind? Sadly, he'd get taken down by patrolling guards, but dude, some new little human player crossing over a bridge on the canal ends up getting wrecked by the freaking beast. Like, how awesome would that be? Regardless, ever since learning about the sewer beast, I was always a little anxious when I'd fall into the canal and feared that this mysterious crocolis would overtake me. Although, he doesn't drop anything of value and is a disappointment in those terms, on the other hand, this guy has created so many fond memories for thousands of players who have played WoW over the years. Now, some of the comments in the forums on certain NPCs or items are full of treasure, and this happens to be one of them. So, I want to share a few people's stories and memories of this urban legend. In 2008, Glows writes, On my level 14 mage with my 13 warlock friend, we were fishing together, having fun and such. My friend decided to hop in the water and cover my bobber, when he didn't come back up from his dive and died instantly, like in a horror movie when you go under but don't come back up, I jumped down and saw him charging at me, and my friend's corpse. I was scared, tried to run, sadly swimming decreases your speed, as for Crocolis, it increases your speed, it caught up in no time, one hit us both, would have made a perfect horror movie, I wish I had my fraps turned on. <laughs> The writing on these forums sometimes, guys. But no, it glows same. I wish, mm, I wish I had it captured the first time I turned the corner of the trade district, headed towards the mage quarter, and I saw that picture of ten people standing on either side of the canal looking at the sewer beast. Like that never happens, dude. I, I can still see it, but I wish I had it recorded. Now I want to read these next three comments in a row, starting off with Xanazua in 2009. He said, "It can drop a bag, which can lead to many fun role-playing ways." Maybe it killed an explorer and ate his bag. Maybe his bag fell into the water and no one believed him when he told them a crocolist ate his bag. Who knows, Fafus. <laughs> I point this out because I'm really interested in roleplaying whenever Classic comes around. I've never done it um, and I really want to take on the full experience of being immersed and playing the game. So yeah, dude, whenever we're playing and say the bag drops off of the Sewer Beast and Stormwind, I can just, you know, type in chat, you know, this was the bag of I don't know, Magni Bronzebeard's brother who got drunk the other day and fell in the canal. You know, something stupid like that. So, it just, it's, it's really interesting to me. So, the second one by Kura Mapais in 2010. Back in 2005, when I started WoW, a real life friend lock summoned me to Stormwind right when I started level 1 or 2. I hadn't even figured out how to walk and stop, so I fell into the canals and the crocolis got me right away. Fun memories. Now, uh, that's just, that's just classic right there. And, and it's so weird because it, it's so often, even back in 2005, you, you'd have someone introduce you to the game and then they'd do some crazy in-game mechanic like summoning you as a level 1 or 2 to some crazy zone. And as a level 1 or 2, that's just a mind-blowing experience. And so it was really cool to point out this guy. Um, one, of his first, one of his first encounters was the Sewer Beast. Probably, probably the first hour that he played, he, uh, he saw the Sewer Beast in Stormwind. Now the third one I want to point out is Sirius in 2011. I remember this guy from my very first week playing WoW on its launch, pretty sure. It one shot my friend, we were both really low level and it was the first skull level mob we'd seen. WoW was new to us back then and was all about exploring and learning the world. No WoW head, Alkazam, item level, nobody cared about loot. Heck, I didn't, yet, I didn't know anything beyond green quality armor even existed. So we saw this guy and kept swimming closer to him afraid of what might happen, but nothing did. We kept edging closer, kept testing his patience. Then, 
with sound full on, because back then no add-ons, no messing with settings for me, the croc struck my friend and one-shot him, instantly killing him with a loud roar. I absolutely jumped out of my seat in terror, one of the best memories of WoW I have. Those were the days. Nice. And, and, and uh, I just, I, I have to point this out because the mystery factor. Yeah, this was one of the first times the dude had seen a skull icon. Oh my gosh. Like no one no one knew no one knew this guy's loot table, no one knew what level he was. Like I said, is he a world boss? Is he a mini boss? Is he gonna summon something whenever we start attacking him? He's in the freaking Stormwind City canals. Um and and it just creates these these unforgettable memories that you'll have forever. Now this is weird and I I, I, I love to latch on to these ideas and things, um, because because they're so empowering to me you know it's like dude this experience was amazing it's never gonna be like this again and you know to an extent that's true but i i don't want to i don't want to shy away the retail players i don't want to shy away people that have never played this game and say you know this is the best experience it's never going to be this great again because you know it, it's the second iteration or you already know what the sewer beast is about and you know that's where that's where my obligation as a content creator you know i kind of ruined that experience for you but if it wasn't me, someone else would do it, or you'd look it up. So that's kind of unavoidable. But yeah, um, you're still going to have a great experience regardless. It's just really neat to see the first time, you know, the mystery. If we all played if we all played a new game nowadays, dude, it'd be, it'd be the same way. So it's an old game, but it doesn't mean it's going to be any less of a great experience. It, it's it's going to be amazing. It's just going to be different. You know, like they said, vanilla and classic are two different games. It's going to be good either way. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm absolutely loving this series right now. I think I stumbled upon something really cool, something really good for me, for my channel. This series is allowing me to cover one topic, one item, one NPC that I really find interesting. Memories that I'm nostalgic about, things that I really cherish. And so, from a content creator's perspective, it's really neat to be able to put this content out. And it's a lot more fun for me. Not that the guide videos aren't fun, because I'm digging my guide series uh, personally, because it's allowing me to get ready for classic, and I'm getting prepared in ways, in bigger ways than you guys know right now. Can't really tell you, but it's going to be huge. So, the guide series are cool, but this is really neat. Um, and whenever I'm making these videos, guys, whenever I'm projecting these nostalgic ideas towards you, I don't want to just throw them at you. I want to hear about your experiences. So please, please, please tell me about your comments or tell me about your experiences. Sorry, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to chat about it. That's the point of the series. It's the point of these videos. It's the point of this channel. And then for everybody that's never played classic before, I want you to be included as well. Tell me about the things that you're excited about. Come classic, you know, um, what, what are some similar experiences you may have had in other games? I just want everybody to include that's the community that I am trying to foster and grow. I'm psyched. I'm pumped. Thanks for watching, guys. It's your boy, Grace, for days. Howdy.